Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering amyloidosis. This is the fourth video in my series of eight videos covering cell injury and an introduction to cancer. So when you're done with this one, I hope you will check out the rest of these videos. You can see here in the top right corner that I give the overall topic of amyloidosis a high yield rating of five. For those of you that aren't familiar with the high yield rating, it is a scale from one to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the USMLE step one exam. And if you want more information about how that's calculated or how to interpret that number, you can head to my website here. We'll start off talking about amyloidosis in some general terms. And amyloidosis is when you've got misfolded proteins that become insoluble and then aggregate in the extracellular matrix as a solid. Amyloidosis is not a single disease, it's a collection of diseases that re result from different causes that all end up with some sort of misfolded protein. Classically, these proteins are going to misfold into beta pleated sheets, which is something you might see pop up in a question. Something else you're going to see pop up in questions pretty frequently is apple green birefringence. And that's because when you take a biopsy specimen of a tissue with amyloidosis aggregates, stain it with Congo red stain, and place it under a polarized light, you get a picture that looks like this. And that's pretty much the main way to diagnose amyloidosis is this staining technique. Now we can talk about some specific types of amyloidosis, and we'll go through these pretty quickly because step one questions tend not to dive into too much depth here. AL amyloidosis is an amyloid that forms from light chain immunoglobulins, and that's the protein that's going to aggregate. And it's systemic, so you can find it in many different organs. And it's usually related to some disease like multiple myeloma, some sort of plasma cell disorder. And here, this disease creates an excess of light chain portions of the antibodies, which then go on to aggregate. So if you've got an equal number of light chain and heavy chain immunoglobulins, they'll pair up and become a full immunoglobulin. But in these sort of disorders, you're going to have more light chain than heavy chain, so you've got a bunch of leftover light chain and that light chain is what goes on to aggregate and cause problems. And you can think about the L in AL as standing for light. AA amyloidosis is also a systemic form of amyloidosis, but it's a form of secondary amyloidosis, meaning it's caused by some other disease. Usually this is some sort of chronic inflammation. And this type of chronic inflammation causes an increase in acute phase reactants primarily the acute phase reactant we're talking about is serum amyloid A, SAA. This overexpression of SAA ends up leading to an excess, which then aggregates and causes issues. Familial amyloidosis is not systemic. It's generally limited to the heart and the CNS, and it's an aggregate of a mutated type of transthyretin and transthyretin is sort of a cousin of albumin. And this certain inherited mutation to transthyretin makes it more likely to aggregate and form amyloid. It's the only type of amyloidosis that I'll cover that is hereditary. Senile cardiac amyloidosis is a type of amyloidosis that's isolated to the heart. And it's caused by an aggregation of normal transthyretin. So unlike the familial type, this is just normal transthyretin. There's no mutation. And this is not a big, as big of an issue as the other types of amyloidosis because it's generally just a normal sign of aging and it's asymptomatic. It doesn't cause a whole lot of problems in most cases. So this is really just an incidental finding. Type 2 diabetes myelitis you're going to have increased secretion of insulin. And if you remember your pathophysiology, amylin is 
secreted in equal parts with insulin. So when you're creating a whole bunch of insulin, try to control the sugars in diabetes, you're also going to have a whole bunch of amylin. And this amylin can turn around and aggregate in the beta cells of the pancreas. Alzheimer's disease also has amyloidosis, primarily seen in the CNS, and its aggregates made up of beta amyloid protein. The amyloid precursor protein is cleaved for unknown reasons, and these fragments, known as beta amyloid protein, can then aggregate in the brain. That brings us to the end of this video. Please give me some feedback by commenting at the bottom of the page. Those of you that are familiar with my video series know that I currently only have videos that cover about a quarter of the total material on step one. Before I dedicate a bunch more money and time to finishing the project, I want to make sure you all actually find it useful. You could say stop on step one is currently in the proof of concept phase. So please let me know if you love it, hate it, or have suggestions for how to improve it.